Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating a trigonometric function. We have dx over sine x plus cosine x plus 1, and we're going to integrate that. Now, to be able to integrate these kinds of functions, like rational functions of sine and cosine, we use a special substitution, which is called, I believe, wire stress substitution, and this is how it goes. So we're going to go ahead and set z equal to tangent x over 2. This might look, look real weird because we don't have x over 2 in the equation. But guess what? Sine x and cosine x can both be written in terms of half angles. There are half angle and double angle formulas, right? So let's go ahead and first isolate x from here. x over 2 is just going to be arc tangent of z. And then we can kind of write x as 2 times arc tangent of z. You could also write arctangent as tan inverse. That notation is commonly used in the United States, but I don't think it's very, very common. That's why I tend to use arctangent, arc sine, arc cosine these days. Anyways, so that's my x value and finding x in terms of z is important because we do need to get to dx. So to find dx, we need to basically differentiate and then multiply by dz because our new variable is z right? And the derivative of arctangent is, remember, 1 over 1 plus z squared. So this is going to be 2 over 1 plus z squared times dz, but I could just write it as 2dz over 1 plus z squared. Be careful, don't get dz or dz. You're supposed to get dz from here, obviously. So that's dx. What else do I need? Oh, I do need sine and cosine. How do I get there? Good question. Now, if you look at the original formula, the secret sauce, you can go ahead and actually find sine and cosine from here. How? Let's go ahead and talk about it real quick. We know that tangent x over 2 is equal to z. And do you mind if I don't write x over 2 in parentheses because I think that's understood. I know it's better if it's written, but I just don't like really using parentheses unless they're really necessary. Okay. So... From here, we can basically use the double angle to go to tangent. So the idea is the following. From tangent x over 2, we're going to go to tangent x. And then from that, we're going to go to sine and cosine. Make sense? So that's the plan. You should always have a plan. And tangent x is basically the double angle for x over 2. So it's just going to be 2z over 1 minus z squared. In this case, I kind of use the formula for tangent of 2 theta, which is 2 tangent theta divided by 1 minus tangent squared theta. Make sense? This is the double angle formula. So now I do have something for tangent, but I need to find sine and cosine. How, how do you find it from here? You need to draw a right triangle. I mean, you don't have to, but that's a good way to do it. So this is going to be my x. Or, yeah, that's my x. And then tangent x is 2z, or not 2z, divide by 1 minus z squared. If you use the Pythagorean theorem real quick, let me give it to you to keep a long story short. The hypotenuse is going to be 1 plus z squared. This also gives us Pythagorean triples if we use it wisely. There's obviously a better way to do it, but anyways, this triangle works, and it helps us to find sine and cosine. Let's go ahead and find sine and cosine from here. Sine x is just going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is 2z over 1 plus z squared. And cosine x is going to be the adjacent, 1 minus z squared, divided by 1 plus z squared. Great. So we got sine and cosine, and then we have the dx and pretty much everything we need. Let's go ahead and see what else we might need, right? So let's go ahead and write the original problem, dx over sine x plus cosine x plus 1, and we're going to integrate it. Now, we do know what to replace sine and cosine with, and obviously 1 is 1, and dx is already known. So let's go ahead and plug it in. What is dx? dx is 2dz over 1 plus z squared. 2dz over 1 plus z squared. And then at the bottom, we're going to have sine x, which is 2z over 1 plus z squared. And by the way, notice the similarity between dx and sine x. They're very close, right? Great. And then cosine x is 1 minus z squared over 1 plus z squared, and then plus 1. Awesome. And then, of course, we're going to integrate it. Let's go ahead and simplify this. How do you simplify that? 
obviously we can make a common denominator and then get rid of the denominator so imagine we did that and now 1 plus z squared is going to cancel out of course this is going to be uh, this is going to have a common factor too i mean common denominator and at the bottom we're going to have something like this 2z plus 1 minus z squared and then plus by making a common denominator we're going to get 1 plus z squared and this is just awesome you know why because the z squared is going to cancel out that will bring in a lot of complications to this integral but now we got rid of it which is nice and now we have 2dz and 1 plus 1 is 2 so that's 2z plus 2 guess what we can divide a 2 out so that's going to be dz over z plus 1 and that's just awesome because that's such a simple integral how do you integrate 1 over z plus 1 think about it if you had dz over z that would be ln right ln z and i know i'm supposed to write absolute value but just i'm, I'm just going to ignore it and i'm not putting the constant yet but okay fine i'll just write it down with the dz over z plus 1 you're going to get ln z plus 1 and obviously you could use absolute value if you want but wait a minute do we have anything else on the right hand side are we solving a differential equation a separable differential no we're just integrating something so that should be the final answer and let's put a c here let's turn this into c sub one so they're not the same okay doesn't matter no big deal okay great so that should be the answer right is it hopefully if i didn't make any mistakes but now we need to back substitute what is dz what is z well actually i don't need to worry about dz because this is what I need to worry about, right? So what is z? Let's go back. Do you remember what z was? I think it was tangent x over 2, right? So we can kind of write this as, or in other words, to write it fully, we had the integral of dx over sine x plus cosine x plus 1. And then that equals ln 1 plus, I want to write the 1 first. Actually, no big deal. Uh, tangent x over 2 plus c again you could put that in absolute value if you want i'm not going to but hopefully that's understood anyways this should be the answer right is that it well let's go ahead and take a look at the result from well, from alpha and see if we agree on the same thing uh oh we're getting something completely different right okay why is that happening okay let's go ahead and take a look so we did get this but we can do the following 1 plus tangent x over 2 can be written as 1 plus sine x over 2 over cosine x over 2. And then we can make a common denominator, cosine x over 2 plus sine x over 2 divided by cosine of x over 2. As you can see, we wrote it as a quotient instead of a sum, right? And then we can now ln it and, of course, add the constant. And now we do have the ln of, okay, fine, I'm going to write the absolute value a couple times because that way we can agree with the results, right? Now, we have a quotient, and the ln of a quotient can be written as the ln of, what? Two, I mean, the difference of two lns. So we can write this as follows, and that should bring us to the end of this year. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.